The world of public transport is entering a period of sustained and radical change. It's probably at its most complex right now. The drivers include technology, with the shift to electric and autonomous vehicles, the need to collaborate between private and public transport operators, governments and their need to meet their commitments to reducing emissions through agreements such as the Paris Climate Change Agreement, and ultimately a desire to make cities more livable. The public transport experience needs to adapt and deliver through these changes, and that means a ticketing experience that gives customers what they want while giving you a return on your existing investments. Today I'm going to share with you how Snapper is giving our customers what they want. I'll start by talking about the insights we've gained from our customers and from other transport authorities who have made the move to account-based ticketing, or ABT. I'll share how we've developed a brand new experience by extending our traditional card-based ticketing scheme to a new generation account-based model. We've done this at a fraction of the cost of other account-based systems, without investing in any new equipment and in a short amount of time. If you have a card-based scheme, then this may be possible for you too. Let me tell you a little bit about Snapper. Snapper is based in Wellington, New Zealand, and for the last 10 years we've provided the fare collection service for New Zealand Bus and Greater Wellington Regional Council. More recently, we've been deploying these services in other markets around the world. Focusing on our Wellington scheme, we've issued around 700,000 Snapper cards. And while they are used primarily on bus, we've also extended the card to integrate with taxis, on-street parking, and the cable car, in effect creating the foundation for an integrated transport experience in the city. We define a channel as any place that a customer can go to purchase transit products and to top up their card. All our channels are designed to support real-time transactions. If you load a product or the purse, it's ready to use immediately. We started with retail, we've added online, self-serve kiosks, and mobile, with mobile available for Android users with an NFC smartphone. So while Android users are happy about this, it's unfortunately ruled out iPhone users because Apple has not opened up their NFC chip yet. So how are customers using these channels? Over time, we've seen a shift in the channel mix, which is driven by customers' preference for self-service. If you look at the retail channel on the left, the dark green bar represents the share of reload transactions that took place in 2012, and you can see that retail dominated all of the other channels with 96% share, with only a couple of a percent going to online and self-service kiosks. Fast forward to 2017, which is the light blue bar. Retail's dropped to represent 60% of customer transactions, yet mobile's now grown to 22%, and kiosks are not far behind that at 15%. What this tells us is that customers' preference is to self-serve. They want to top up and purchase tickets in the most convenient way possible for them. And that's trending away from visiting a retailer as long as other options are made available to them. Naturally, we want to take that further. And our customers do as well. We continue to get feedback from our customers that there's room for improvement. Some of them tell us that topping up is inconvenient, that they can't top up online without a USB dongle thingy. And it's great that Snapper has an Android app, but what about my iPhone? Customers want a fully digital experience. And when we talk with other transport authorities, we hear of similar customer feedback. The experience still needs work. Customers don't want to have to go out of their way to find a retailer to top up their card. Or they don't like waiting for 24 hours or even half an hour to collect the top up that's been initiated online. And the root of all these challenges is the card based model that the industry's relied on, where the card is offline 
and is the master of all data. Have we really stretched this model as far as it can go? The common wisdom is that the path to a digital experience is through account-based ticketing, or ABT. This is generally designed for an online experience, making the introduction of new technology and services a lot easier for the public transport authority or operator. But when we look at where ABT is at globally, it's clear that it's early days. There is a lot of discussion about ABT and its subset, EMV, but adoption levels are low. We're still at the very beginning of this transition. Cities tell us they have plenty of life left in their existing systems, which makes it hard for them to accelerate this shift. So we decided we needed to learn more about what was holding the industry back. And when we started looking at this, we found there was a clear gap in the market research with very little literature available on the experiences of those who have made the shift to ABT already. And this is because most ABT literature is focused on the vendor, not on the customer. So we decided to undertake this research ourselves. There are roughly a couple of dozen ABT implementations around the world, and we invited them to share their experiences with us. We secured interviews with a cross-section from around the world that included the US, Europe, South Africa, and Asia. And these covered a range of different situations, including transport authorities who have moved directly from paper-based systems to an account-based ticketing system. They included a complete system replacement. And they also include Transport for London, who have implemented EMV alongside their existing Oyster card. For a full view of the research, we've published a white paper that describes the benefits and challenges of ABT, and you can download that from our website. But I'll take you through the highlights of what we learned right now. There were four key drivers that were identified by each of the cities as the main reason for their move to ABT. The first is cost reduction. Transport authorities want to move transactions away from high cost retail channels to bank cards and other smart card based systems, also removing the cost of card issuance. For example, the Land Transport Authority in Singapore expect to drop the cost of fare collection by 20 million Singaporean dollars per annum. And while this is compelling, our research confirmed that the cost benefits are primarily realized when you can turn off your existing system. Otherwise, you're essentially running two cost structures in parallel, effectively overall increasing your costs. The second driver is to improve the customer experience. This is all about making it easy for occasional users to access the transport network. For the regular smart card user, it's about making their funds available in real time, so making that top-up experience really quick and easy. The third driver is to improve flexibility, such as applying capping or promotional type fares as your market might need. And lastly, the ease of integration with new technology is seen as a compelling reason to move to ABT. ABT promises the ability to provide an integrated payment experience for public and private transport, helping drive strategic change. Balancing those benefits out, ABT brings it with it a unique set of challenges. The first is, it takes a long time to implement. Seven out of the eight cities we interviewed said the time to develop and get the system up and running was longer than anticipated. No one did it in less than three years, and the majority were around five years. The second challenge is that latency is an issue. It takes many forms, including slow transaction processing of EMV cards, through to the need to be online for inspection checks. Most cities with an EMV implementation are still working out their policy for inspections and processing for concessions. Thirdly, what's well known in the industry is the risk of the first tap. 
There's a need to negotiate with acquiring banks as to who takes the risk of the first tap if the money can't be recovered from the customer. These are new conversations for a transit authority, and they shouldn't be underestimated. The fourth challenge is that the cost of continuing to support a legacy system can continue to be significant. Ideally, you want to migrate directly from something like paper tickets to account-based ticketing. However, the reality is that there will be a significant time period to require validators that support multiple protocols, including your existing smart card, along with your associated central systems and therefore costs. Lastly, the change in customer behavior has also been a challenge. And this ranges from customers not being able to see their balance when they tap on a device through to not being able to support a concession on a bank card. All of these challenges can be overcome, but they need sufficient time and organization capability to do so. Venture in Chicago was a great example of both the benefits and the challenges of ABT. On the plus side, they've had over 2 million downloads of their application, which provides their customers with a one-stop shopping experience and enables them to pay to ride on multiple transit systems. But it's come at a significant cost. It required a complete system replacement, it cost tens of millions of dollars, and it took many years to design and to deploy. So we didn't want to wait for that. What we want is for our customers to experience the benefits of an account-based model now. And we also want to continue our push towards a new model that integrates public and private transit. So we challenged ourselves. Could we achieve the benefits of ABT, but doing that without a complex system replacement? Could we do it by leveraging our existing card-based system? Could we deploy in months, not years? And would we be able to give ourselves the freedom to upgrade equipment when we wanted to do that, on our terms? And on the cons? Well, we wanted no disadvantages at all. So how would we go about achieving such a challenge? Going back to our original customer insights, we realized that the best way to do this was to evolve our service into a new digital channel, one that's designed for all types of smartphone, iOS and Android, and could also support the web browser. It needed to support multiple payment options for customers to choose how and when they wish to pay. It needed to be built with an account-based architecture at its core, and it would have to be natively designed for the cloud so that costs scale with demand. Fundamentally, we're shifting from a retail experience to a digital experience, something that puts control of transport ticketing in the hands of the customer using the channel that best suits them. From a ticketing system perspective, it also allows a change to a superior cost structure with it, where this experience can scale quickly, easily, and cost-effectively as your customers adopt it. We've been piloting this experience internally and I'm really excited to share this work with you now. The experience is broken into three phases, becoming a customer, using the service, and billing. The first stage is to become a customer. You can sign in with your existing Snapper account credentials and register for an ABT token to be applied to your existing card. Or alternatively, you can sign up as a new customer and have a new card sent to you. The customer can then select their preferred payment source, credit card, direct debit. We ask for a mobile number that we use to validate the application, and then they're good to go. The second phase is using the service. The key benefit to the customer is removing the inconvenience of topping up. They simply use their smart card to tag on and off as they always have. And while that remains the same for the customer, the application experience is now simpler and easier to understand. The customer sees a list of transactions and when payments are due to be made against their account. The key for us is to hide the complexity from the customer. They just don't need to know anymore where and how fares are calculated. The customer can simply travel from A to B knowing that they are paying the best fare. But when you're traveling from A to B, sometimes things go wrong. 
For example, a customer might forget to tag off. Normally that would result in a penalty fare, which would drive a call to the call centre to resolve it. We can provide a much better experience now. For customers who forget to tag off, we automatically identify these occurrences and a push notification is sent to prompt the customer to resolve the issue themselves. We use automation techniques to predict where it was that tap was missed based on previous journeys. If this is correct, all the customer has to do is tap to confirm. If not, they can slide the map to find the correct stop. We give the customer until the end of the day to confirm the tag off location and therefore avoid paying a penalty fare. And this is all supported by Snapper's risk and trust engines that allow us to manage the financial liability. Another really good example of driving customer self-service is that we give the customer the ability to block and unblock their own card if it's lost or stolen. While it's great for us, it's also much more convenient for the customer to be able to do this themselves. They don't have to find the number for the call center, they don't have to wait on hold, and then explain their problem only to find their card again the next day and have to repeat the whole process. We put all of the control in the customer's hands. And if you do need to talk with someone, you can message directly from within the app, providing an instant and convenient way to talk through an issue. The last phase is billing. This is where all transactions are aggregated and billed once per day. The customer can view each transaction on the app, and if there is a query or a dispute to be resolved, they can also do this directly through the app. The experience is designed to leverage customer preferences for using notifications on their smartphone. There are a wide range of these, and they are all designed to ensure a flawless travel experience and give control to the customer. Everything from an unfinished trip through to an expiring credit card. Control of the experience is in the customer's hands. And we complete this service with a support console that gives us and any customer service agents the ability to view individual accounts and tokens that are associated with those accounts. The view on the console is designed to mirror the app so that we can provide the most complete service for customers that do need any assistance. So what results have we achieved? As you'd expect, we are able to collect and rate all transactions and fares accordingly. The real benefits come from a service perspective. When we look at our escalations to our call center, penalty escalations account for 18% of all customer service queries every month, with lost cards at 22%. There were no penalty or lost card escalations made to customer service during the trial. But that doesn't mean they didn't happen. They did. It's just that customers could fix these issues themselves. So we've achieved two of the benefits of ABT. We've improved the customer experience and we've reduced our service costs. What about improve flexibility. Once we started the pilot, we wanted to understand customers' payment preferences and if, they, if there was an appetite for other methods of paying that wouldn't result in a card processing fee. We had planned to deliver a credit card and direct debit payment options for the app, but the feedback we received from customers clearly indicated that the preference other than a credit or debit card was to make the payments themselves using internet banking. Again, the customers want control of the process. This also happens to be a free option for the customer. Based on these results, we're able to pivot instantly to change from implementing the direct debit option to implementing the ability to use internet banking. While we already had good levels of agility, we've found we've achieved a new level which is only possible with an account-based system deployed natively in the cloud. So to summarize, taking our card-based system to the next level, we have developed a new digital channel that acts as a unified platform for all customers to access online or by smartphone. It has an account-based architecture at its core so that, so that it has the flexibility for fair policy variations and open interfaces to support a wide range of tokens and technologies. It's underpinned by a fair engine, risk, 
and trust-based models that are natively designed for the cloud, meaning that this can be easily added to existing card-based systems. There's no software or equipment upgrades required because it leverages the existing card-based infrastructure using the smart card as a token. Of course, this doesn't stop us from upgrading our equipment anytime we want to. This model will support new devices from a range of providers. It fundamentally delinks these from the back office. So where are we going to from here? We've now validated that this new digital service satisfies those customer challenges that we couldn't completely solve with our card-based system. We've removed the pain of topping up. We've also validated a reduction in service costs, and as we scale the deployment, we expect to achieve a reduction in the cost of reload as well. Importantly, we've not added any material new costs, and we've executed this project in a few short months after developing our native cloud platform. Longer term, we're also intending to continue digitizing and automating services to continually make improvements and to deliver the benefits of simpler integration with new technology. I want to share three specific examples with you. The first is that we've been able to demonstrate that this service will support a seamless shift to HCE with a token implementation that's fundamentally more secure than a card-based alternative. And this will allow us to reduce issuance costs in the long run. The second example is that we, we can see now that we can easily integrate other payment methods, including all of the various smartphone payment systems. And thirdly, we can see how we can support payment for private transport providers as well by simply integrating with this account, providing a unified payment experience for both public and private transport. We've built Snapper on a simple premise. If we can improve the experience for our cardholders, then why not share our work with the rest of the industry? So this development isn't just for us. The vast majority of the ticketing ecosystem globally uses card-based systems and simply can't justify changing out these systems, while at the same time they can't afford not to be participating in the strategic transformation of public transport. So if you have years of life left in your system, we think you need another option. So we're making the service available for you to consume now. This offering sits alongside our other offerings of Mobile Reload and Ticketing as a Service. Snap has promised to you, whether you're a transport authority or an existing systems integrator, is that we will make it easy for you to make your existing system more flexible letting you get on with the business of strategic transformation. If you want to know more, please come and contact us on our Snapper website and we'll talk to you about how you can deploy scale digital channels for your ticketing system today.